Welcome to The Rebel Rebel. It's a podcast for creative rebels and entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Michael Dargy. In every episode, we look for truly unique and interesting guests who have said, often literally, f*** it to the status quo and have just gone on their own way. One thing's for sure is that it's never easy, it's always challenging, and these rebels wouldn't have it any other way. Look for the links to everything we talk about in the show notes on our website at therebelrebelpodcast.com. Welcome to the Sea Space Sessions. My name is Michael Dargy. I'm the host. And across from me, at a very uh, safe distance, I've got Robin Van Eck. How are you? I'm great. That's great. Uh, Robin is just down the hall from me at Sea Space, and uh, you are running the Alexandra Writer Center. Yes. Um, if you could take a minute and let's just talk about sort of what you're doing here at Sea Space, what brought you to Sea Space, and then I want to dig into your personal story, which is going to be super cool. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what brought us to Sea Space? Well, they let us in. So that was <laughs> like that was a great thing. Yeah. Um you've been here since 2017. Yes. Since the early days. Yep. We were I think we were the second tenants to move in. I think the Rose Foundation were the only ones who were already here. Oh wow. So really close anyway. There's lots of people moving in at that time. So yeah. yeah. It was a six year process to get here. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because you guys were based out in Inglewood, right? Yes. In, yeah, in the Alexandra Center, hence right. the name. Yeah. Um, and you kept it. That's nice. We did keep it. <laughs> uh, yeah, we were in the basement of the Alexandra Center since the early 80s. Wow. And uh, just found that we were starting to outgrow the space. Right. Definitely. And um, really needed to, if we wanted to grow we needed to move. Right. You know, it was just a no brainer. So, um, this opportunity came up with this great new project with the yeah. King Edward school. And we're like, Oh, we have to get in there. And yeah, yeah. we tried. And I think actually our first application, it didn't get turned down, but we missed one of the deadlines. Oh, and so we thought, Oh, oh, we, <laughs> oh no. we, we screwed up. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, we're always going to be stuck in this basement. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, and we actually, we thought we'd missed it. So we started looking at other places around the city, but oh yeah. my God, the price of, yeah of space that would suit what we needed was just so out of our reach. Yeah. Um, so on a whim, our president at the time was like, you know what, let's just, let's just contact C space again yeah. and see what happens. Right. Oh, wow. And they did. So she did. And, uh, talked to Dieter. Dieter's awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, we had missed one of their deadlines still even then. Yeah. Um, but they're like, nope, send us an application right away. So nice. And then they let us in. So oh, we that's were, awesome. Yeah. So that was exciting. Well, and I can only imagine from a creative perspective coming from a basement up to the fourth floor of this, you know, place. It's like a living, breathing art, you know, hub. Oh my God. It was been... like moving up to the penthouse. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was amazing. Like just coming into work now and actually having light was, yeah. <laughs> was pretty awesome. <laughs> and regulated heating. <laughs> like oh. The heating in the in that basement in the old space was just really um it was atrocious. Like in the front, it would be really, really, really warm. And then you'd go into the back and you're freezing. Oh my God. And that was even in the spring and summer. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, it was awful. Crazy. Um, I mean, it was a great space. Like, don't get me wrong. It was, it was a great building, same type of building, really yeah. like an old sandstone school. And, um, it had, it had its own, it had its own charm, its own creative charm. I know yeah. the first time I walked in there, I thought this is just like the school that I, Went to kindergarten in. Yeah, right. you know? and yeah, so yeah. it was really cool that way. Oh, that was cool. Uh, so what brought you to Alexandra's Writing Center? Like, how did you decide to get involved with them in the first place? Me as an individual? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Let's, let's go back into <laughs> yesteryear. <laughs> that goes back a long ways. Yeah. Um, well, I've always wanted to be a writer. Yeah. And... Um, when I, I'd moved to Calgary in 2000 and actually this, this is a terrible story. I probably shouldn't tell this story because <laughs> it's going to embarrass myself, but, <laughs> um, I think it was about 2002. And I mean, over the years, I, 
have always been like, okay, I'm going to write a novel or I'm going to write a screenplay or I'm going to do something. I've just, I've always wanted yeah. to do it. And I would start and then I'd get a page in or something. I'd be like, oh, this is garbage. This is stupid. Why am I, why am I even bothering? Uh. And, uh, and I hadn't taken a creative writing class since high school, but I thought I know everything I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, how hard can this be? Yeah. And, uh, so I was, mid 2002, I think I was just like, no, I'm going to take this seriously. Now I'd moved to Calgary in 2000 and I was like, no, it's time for a change. So, um, I, <laughs> I started looking online for writing contests. Cause I thought, well, yeah. that's, that's where you start, right? Like oh, you yeah, have right naturally just write for just a contest. Start running the marathon. Yeah. <laughs> so I found this contest um, which looked amazing because it had like this tremendous prize. And of course I'm the most brilliant writer out there. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and like the word count was like maximum 10,000 words. And I was like, easy. <laughs> yeah. So I, um, I wrote this story and I think it came in a little under 10,000 words and it was like brilliant, you know, yeah. and packaged it up and Your I opus. sent it off and I was like, okay, you know, now they're going to read my amazing story. And of course I'm going to be like this magical winner. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, and of course then the whole process is like, wait, right. To, yeah. to, um, get your response. <laughs> um, I think about, I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe 10 months had passed. I don't even remember how long and I still hadn't heard anything back. So finally I contacted them and, 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 and they were, they were really nice and they were just like, Oh no, you know, your, your story wasn't selected. Nothing more than that. And I'm yeah. like, okay, fine. But then I started thinking like, maybe I need to learn how to write better. <laughs> maybe there's something uh, I'm missing. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and I went, I, uh, so I started looking online for creative writing classes because I also I wasn't doing anything outside of my job. So yeah. um, and at that time I was the manager at a gas station. <laughs> so, right. you know, um, I didn't feel like I was really going anywhere with my life. That's for sure. <laughs> and uh, so I, oh, I started looking for creative writing classes. And of course, first thing I found was, you know, University of Calgary and yeah. Mount Royal and all the continuing ed courses and. And, uh, but I was like, no, I didn't, I didn't want something that was that academic. Like it felt to me like it was too okay. serious if I was going to do it at a university. It's like, oh my God, why? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and then finally I thought, you know, there's gotta be something more community focused, you know, yeah. something casual and whatever. And, and then I found the Alexandra Writer Center, um, I was terrified though. Like I took really, it took me weeks before I even signed up for a class. Like I saw the classes they were offering and, um, I was like, okay, like I can do this. I can do this, but it took me forever to talk myself into doing it. And I think it was the day before the class started that I called them and I said, is there any space left in this class? Really? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, can I pay when I come? And they're like, yeah. Like they were just amazing. Wow. You know, like just super casual. I was like, okay, okay. Yeah. And once I'd signed up, I was like, hey, I'm committed. Right. I had to, <laughs> <laughs> had to do it. Um, and that was the first class I took. That was September of 2003. And it's amazing what you don't know <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> until you know it. Right. Yeah. Like it's just, um, mind boggling. I took a, it was a creative writing basics level two when I, cause I thought, Oh, I've taken creative writing before. So, yeah. um, and it was great. That first class was with, uh, Ellen Kelly, you know, great writer herself out of, yeah. out of Airdrie. Um, and the, just the community and the people, you know, that were in that class. And oh. I've still actually one of my closest friends, unfortunately lives in Toronto right now, but, yeah. um, I met him in that first class and we're really? still friends like oh, 17 so years later. Right. So, wow. um, I don't know after that, I just, I was hooked. I think like, I just yeah. started realizing that there was so much I needed to learn, yeah. um, about writing, about the craft, about, you know, character development, just all these little things that you don't really yeah. think about. And so I took 
everything I could possibly afford (laughs) in that, that first year. Um, and then I was so involved that, um, I got convinced (laughs) to join the board of directors in 2004. Oh, wow. Like right out of the gate. Yeah, pretty much. Like I'd been, been with the organization, organization a year and I got convinced to join the board and I thought, okay, why not? (laughs) Um, I actually joined as vice president though. And, uh, but the girl who was supposed to take over as president ended up having to leave after the first month. Oh boy. She got a job overseas. And so I was like, all right. (laughs) So I was president for two years. And so I think I have a really unique perspective seeing it from both sides, Yeah, you know, the business side, the operational side and the, um, and the actual learner side. Man. Well, I know that like up until COVID, like I, I did, uh, Kevin McDonald came, he was wonderful. Like how great was that? You guys were able to. Oh my goodness. That was amazing yeah i actually have to thank nicole yeah <laughs> here at c space for that one but, oh, nice. um yeah that was that was brilliant yeah i was always a kids in the hall fan when i was a kid so right. like, <laughs> so how, how fun is that that you're able to sort of bring that to it as well right yeah that was just um mind-boggling actually um nicole had come to us because she's with king Canuts. yes king Canuts. Yeah. and uh She's like, oh, we had Kevin McDonald came last year and um, but and he wants to come again, but we don't have space for him. And yeah. maybe you guys want to do it. And we're like, hell yeah. <laughs> like That was just we didn't even have to think twice. Like, no about brainer, that. Yeah. 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 His uh, we we got everything sorted out and uh, that class sold out in like a few hours. Yeah. Yeah. I remember seeing it. somebody sent it my way and I was like, oh, yes. And actually it's. Um, I, th- I want to say that it's one of the, like, I was familiar with you because I became a member, but I'd never come to, you know, cause I, this was pre me being in C space. I was like, I wanted to have a place to go write. Yeah. And, uh, so I became a member of the Alexandra writers center. And my plan was to go up there with my laptop and, you know, write in the morning or whatever. But then that came up. I was like blown away. So it was, yeah. What a great opportunity. Yeah. No, that was like, I, I'm not sure we're ever going to top that. Well, maybe we're, we're trying, we're still trying to bring in Anthony Dewar. Oh, um, the author of, uh, all the light we cannot see like that huge yeah. Pulitzer prize winning novel. Yeah. Um, he was supposed to be here in this past May, yeah. but because of COVID uh, it got shut down. We got shut down. The border got closed. <laughs> yeah. All that. So he stuff. can't come. And, um, so we had rescheduled for November, of course, thinking optimistically. That, yeah. Well, hey, you have to, well, right? Yeah. Um, and obviously the border's still not open. And yeah. so we started making a new plan. We still intend on having him come. Yeah. It's, and we've rescheduled him for next May. So. Oh, okay. Well, that's yeah. Good. So have you thought about crossed. doing like some of the video streaming stuff? Like, I know it's not ideal, but. We've, we've talked with his, his agent about that. We've, well, not personally to him. They, they won't actually put us in contact with him yet, yeah, but, that's fair. um, yeah, we talked about it cause he's doing two things for us. So he's doing the same conversation and, and also doing a workshop Yeah, and, um, the in conversation, like he was all, yeah, we can, we can do it virtually. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Um, but there was a little hesitation around the workshop just because I don't know about like the interaction yeah. or, you know, um, and we really felt like, you know, what we've heard about him from everybody is that he is such a dynamic um, and engaging oh, you need and to very see him in down person. to earth oh, person yeah. that you really need to see him in person. Yeah. Um, Worth the wait then. Yeah. I, yeah. I hope so. <laughs> um <laughs> And actually it's worked out better because as long as like we're partnering with the Writers Guild of Alberta to do their conference next year. Yeah. And so we're making him quite a focal point of the conference, which we were going to do this year too. Yeah. But this way it worked out even better because um, now part of the conference, like his in conversation is going to be kind of the, the, you know, the welcome night of the, of the, yeah. of the conference. And 
Plus, then he's willing to do a meet and greet and a book signing and all this stuff. Right. So people are now going to have an even better opportunity to meet him and talk to him and get him to sign their books. Oh, so so good. Yeah. So it's exciting. And we're just like, oh, just hope everything is going to work out. It may. What are your plans for classes like? Because I'm I've got I have at least one, if not seven books in me. (laughs) We all do. Huh. We all do. <laughs> so, you know, if, if I wanted to to start from scratch, what do you have coming up? Do you have anything virtually for me to work on or? All of our classes are online right now. Oh, great. Um, we made a very quick transition back in March. Yeah. Um, and managed to pull everything online, which we're, we're actually kind of blown away that we were even able to do it. Yeah. Um, cause we've been humming and hawing about online classes for years yeah. and we've been, um, people have been asking us, yeah. you know, please, please, please. I want some online. Cause I live like outside of Calgary. I can't come in all the time, oh, right, or, yeah. you know? And, uh, but we just, I think the thing that held us back the most was that we're really a community organization right right and that interaction that you get with other people and that support you get from other people who you're sharing the same experience with yeah um is invaluable yeah and um yeah writing is an isolating thing but you know on its own because you have to write by yourself (laughs) no one no one else is going to do it with you or for you or whatever um damn it (laughs) <laughs> I know. Um, and so we thought like going online, it was just going to take away that community yeah. feel of classes. Yeah. Um, we were wrong. <laughs> so I'm glad to say we were wrong um, because we found the platform that, you know, doing everything by Zoom has, it still gives you that very interactive yeah. component to the class. So yeah, you can't be in the physical space with other people but you can still see the other people you can still talk to the other people you can still share ideas and um i've taught a few classes myself that way and it's been surprisingly quite amazing actually so yeah you don't have to worry about parking right (laughs) Uh, well we have lots of parking down here yeah well we'll have more when they're done this building (laughs) next door That'll be nice. One day. One day. <laughs> when, when they're done. Yeah, when they're done. <laughs> yeah so awesome. everything's online. So oh, you just great. have to go to our website and see all of our listings. All right. I will do that. What is your website? Uh, www.alexandrawriters.org. Nice. Uh, now, you are, you came at this, you started this whole journey just because you wanted to improve your writing. You got involved at the organizational level and the business level, but you've always been working on your writing anyways and if i read my notes correctly and i read our emails correctly you have got a novel you finished your first book (laughs) i did that's awesome congratulations that's huge Mm, thank you (laughs) Uh, yeah it's i'm still trying (laughs) i'm still processing i think yeah well tell me tell me about it like tell me about the tell me about the process like how you got to finally uh, you know finishing it, what it felt like to actually, you know, package it up and be done with it and not do another edit. Like would talk to me. I don't think we're ever done editing. No, of course (laughs) not. It doesn't matter. Uh, Wow. The process of it. I don't know. I mean, you have to, where do I even start? (laughs) Well, what's your book about? Let's start there. Oh, wow. That's, you know, and this is always the question that, um, most writers hate. Yeah. <laughs> What's your book about? Try yeah. to try to explain it to people. So it's interesting. Yeah. Give me a Because in our minds, it's like, oh, this is brilliant. But you try to explain it and it comes out like, uh. Yeah. You need a, a, a log line and synopsis or something, right? Like, yeah. Like they tell us to prepare for that, but I'm not sure how many actually do. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, the book is called Rough and it is about a homeless man um during the flood of 2013 the calgary flood it's not just about a homeless man the main character's name is shermetto and he's living on the streets there's people within the homeless community who are dying but they're all his friends and so he's really trying to go like well why are all my friends dying and um you know he sets out and wants to try and figure this out but he ends up because of one night 
he tries to protect a a woman from being raped outside of a bar. Yeah. And he gets the crap kicked out of him, to put it bluntly. Oh. Uh, ends up in the hospital. And then his daughter comes to see him. So it really is kind of a family mother or not mother, um, father, daughter. Oh, that's nice. Story. Yeah. You know, and kind of looking at what it, what it is like to be homeless, why people choose to be homeless if they choose it. Yeah. And all of that. Wow. <laughs> the backdrop of the Calgary flood. Where can we buy it? Well, it's not out till November 1st. So oh. really you can't buy it anywhere yet. <laughs> okay. Um, but it is being sold at any independent bookstore. Oh, great. Um, like Pages? Pages, Owl's Nest Books, Shelf Life Books. You can get it online at Chapters or Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Oh, um, nice. Just about... And yes, I have looked into this. Just about every city, if you yeah. go in, if you if you um, log into their submission manager, which I've I've looked at, yeah, um, all of them have it available. You just have to order it. That's awesome. Yeah, so uh, it's exciting. Are you going to do a book signing? Or are you going to do like a, a book tour? I don't know. Yeah, everything's very up in the air in terms of. I um, guess. I mean. Travel. What am I? Duh. Sorry, that's my pre-COVID brain. I mean, I might just go sit down in the center, and if people want to come and bring me copies to sign, I'm happy to do it. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, we are doing a virtual book launch Great. on November seventh. Yeah. Um, and it's really fun. Like the the book is being published by Stonehouse Publishing out of Edmonton. Yeah. And um, they great you know, small independent, independent publisher. Um, they've been fantastic to work with. Oh, so um, good. And we're doing a virtual book launch that is all five of their books at one time. Oh, wow. So we're launching all five, their fall season oh, good. at one time. So it's going to be a really fun event. We're, nice. So, uh, yeah. And is, there, uh, is this something that anybody can attend online? Absolutely. Awesome. So I'll get the link for you from you and I'll put it in the show notes so that sure. you know people can Do put it. it in their calendar and check it out. That's so yeah. good. Yeah. It's exciting. Awesome. Uh, do you have, when we're allowed to fly again, do you have a um, part of your brain that just can't wait for when you're walking down the aisle of the airplane and you see somebody reading your book and then they stop and they look at the back of your book? And then they look at you. Well, luckily, there's no picture on the back of my oh. book. <laughs> so, um, airplane? <laughs> I hadn't really <laughs> thought of that. But um, I, ha I have thought of, like, what it would be like to see s someone out there, whether it's on transit or, yeah. you know, sitting in a doctor's office. waiting. For I don't know. <laughs> you know, and seeing them read my book. But yeah. I haven't given a lot of thought to that one. All right. We'll see. Okay. Um, cats or dogs? Both. Okay. Yeah. Good. I have a lot. I, I have a cat. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I have a dog too. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Big dogs or little dog? Well, my preference actually is big dogs. Yeah. But I have a little dog. Gotcha. And she's precious. So. Oh, that's awesome. What are the five things that people need to know? <laughs> <laughs> Wham. <laughs> Five things. I mean, I think there's more things that people need to know. It's true. <laughs> I have to come up with only five. Yeah. <laughs> uh, five things people need to know. Yeah. Not about writing necessarily. Not about anything in particular. Just the, the five things that you wish people would be like, oh, yeah, you know. COVID is not a hoax. <laughs> <laughs> Check. Yeah. Um. Although, you know, you still have to question that one sometimes. I don't know. Um, I mean, I haven't personally known anyone who's been sick, but maybe that's because we're all taking precautions. Most yeah. of us are taking precautions. That's right. So. Masks work. Masks work. Yeah. yeah. Does that count as two now? Oh, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I'll be the judge of that at the end. Um, oh, my Lord. That is such a tough question. Writing is hard. I guess. I guess. Uh, that's more for writers, but right. <laughs> that writing is a lot of hard work. Yeah. Um, a lot of people think that, I mean, we hear it anyway. It's like everyone says they have a story in them, yeah. you know, and, and I do think that everybody has a story in them. Um, but you're never going to get it down on paper unless you actually put in the work. And yeah, it is a lot harder in. than people think. Yeah. Yeah. You know? How many hours a day would you 
recommend writing yeah like is that a thing or is it just like whenever you're struck by the <laughs> oh dear like if i if i need to, if i'm going to get my book out do i need to like commit to five hours of writing every day no, no. matter what no um you know i started my book in 2015 and i think the first draft took me a year about a year yeah um, and that was by no means writing every day. Yeah. That might be writing for an hour here, writing for an hour there. Oh, okay. Um, when I had the time to write for five or six hours, I would try, but that's not realistic. Yeah. Most people can't sit still that long. <laughs> Do you, and just because I'm curious, and then we got to go back to the five things that people need to know. I mean, I can't get out of that one. <laughs> no. I'm trying. <laughs> but when, when you're doing it, do you have like a, a board with post-its on it to keep track of plot points and characters? Like, what does that process look like for you? You know what I did for this book? Um, I say this book because I am working on another book. Yeah. But um, that one I... I did just because I mean, it's it structurally, it's hard to like, even once you get the first draft out, like you have to move things around and make yeah. them like work structurally or, um, and my book is actually written from three different points of view. Oh, so wow. it's sure Meadow obviously is the driving force of the book, but, um, or is it <laughs> oh, <laughs> not, there? There is a question. Um, it's also, there is, a whole thread from his daughter's point of view. Oh, okay. Um, and there's sections from the river's point of view. Oh, so interesting. This is, this is, you know, the Calgary flood was such a disastrous experience for Calgarians, especially those mm -hmm. living, you know, in the flood zones. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I did sections from the river's point of view interesting and what was going on with that so oh i can't wait to hope it's creative this. enough uh, i've been told it's too experimental by some people but um i like to push boundaries so why good. not right yeah and my publisher liked it so yeah <laughs> so i'll go with that yeah so forget <laughs> you people that say that it was too far <laughs> yeah exactly yeah um what else do okay what yeah. else do people need to know yeah we got two more be kind to others yes please <laughs> You know, we're living in such a difficult world right now. And um, we're also divisive. It doesn't matter if it's about COVID or if it's about Black Lives Matter or if it's about murder hornets. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I hope those were not a real. I hope that was the only hoax. So. Yeah. Where are the murder hornets? <laughs> um, yeah, just just be kind to others. Like, it's just it's so sad to see what's going on and how much hate and anger there is in the world. And I don't think it's necessary. Yeah. Agreed. Love your neighbor. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> how many is that? Four. You got one more. <laughs> one more. You can do it. I believe in you. <clears throat> Oxford comma or no, no Oxford <laughs> comma. I personally don't care. <laughs> <laughs> It's like whichever comma you prefer. It doesn't matter. Two spaces after a period or one? Oh, God, only one. Yes. <laughs> I knew we were going to get along. That, <laughs> that is so outdated. Um, that's from typewriters. Yeah. People need to realize that. It's from typewriters. Yeah. Um, computers already have enough space. <laughs> yeah. You got to figure it out. Yeah. Um, good that you throw in random questions. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, what else do people need to know? The pandemic will end. Yay! <laughs> yes, we have to be optimistic. It will end. Of course it will. You know, I think about that a lot because, you know, I'm like, okay, it's hard now, but um, we'll get through it because they did with the Spanish flu, right? So yeah. we'll get through it and things will be different, but I think it'll be better, maybe. I, Hopefully. I like it. I, I, I like the idea of optimism. And that, you know, it, in the in the wash at the end of this all, you know, it will be in a better place than we were before. At least, you know, it's something that the entire world has gone through together, whereas, you know, in other things it could be like, oh, that's just something that they went through. Or that's just something I went through. And yeah. this is this is a great equalizer that, you know, do you remember when? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, it's those um, 
you know, it's so easy to see things that these horrible things that go on on the other side of the of the globe. And we're like, oh, that's so sad. That's terrible. I feel bad. But you forget about it right away. Yeah. Right. Because it's not affecting you. And um, this is so. Exactly. Yeah. Those are great. Those are awesome. Those are fantastic five things. I love it. OK, good. <laughs> <sighs> Got through it. <laughs> um, do you watch television? Yes. Uh, uh, like Netflix kind of yeah. thing. What's your favorite show right now? What's binge worthy? <laughs> Oh God, I don't even want to admit this. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty pleasure coming up. Um, I just started watching um, Cobra Kai. Oh, it is so good. It is so good. <laughs> it is so good. God. It's, I mean, I, I, mean, love, it's terrible, I but loved it's good. the Karate Kid yeah. back in the 80s. Yes, yeah. I'm fairly old. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, but I I really, really love that show. I, I was putting off watching it because I thought, oh, really? Yeah. Ralph Macchio in his 40s. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, this can't be good, right? Yeah. But no, it is a really, really good show. Yeah, it is. It is charming. It's endearing. It's uh, it, and, and there's equal parts. It's bad. Like, it's just yeah. it's not particularly well done. And it's funny. Like, yeah. it, it is like a, it's a, only a half hour show, which yeah. I was surprised. It's little homages to, yeah. you know, they, they, they don't take themselves too, too seriously. Yeah. But. Yeah. you're not done season two yet are you no just okay. started i gotcha. think yeah yeah definitely worth watching i like my my partner jen she's just like really and i'm just like oh yes like <laughs> i am in like I'm, <laughs> yeah you don't understand yeah, i start well i finished i caught up on the blacklist yeah oh i'm yeah. so far behind on the blacklist. yeah um i saw like the final season or not final season but the latest season yeah. what came out so i finished that and then uh, I was like, oh, now what do I watch? I did start watching Sons of Anarchy. Oh, um, yeah, I finished that. <laughs> yeah. um, I think I'm in season two. I yeah. Think. You know, and, I, and I like it. I like it. I just I just I was like, no, I need something else now. And yeah. And then I thought, well, I'm just I'm going to I'm going to try this. I'd seen it on there for a while. And my husband was kind of laughing at me and. He's like, I don't know if we should watch this. And I'm like, oh, well, whatever. And he doesn't like any of the same shows I do. So, oh, well, then. Yeah. Um, except for there's something recently that we ended up watching together that he surprisingly liked. He re he really likes like those serial killer, but oh. the real stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so, I'm just like, oh, it's you the know? same with I, Jen. She, she's also the same way. I like the fictional stuff. <laughs> you know, because like, I think there's a degree of separation that yeah. you can get from the from the, the fictional serial killer yeah, kind of real. stuff. It's too but real. we were I was watching something that he ended up watching with me. And I for the life of me can't remember what it is now. It'll come to me later, but yeah. Awesome. But I stayed up and watched almost the whole first season of Cobra Kai in one evening. Yeah. I wasn't intending to. Yeah. <laughs> but I was like, no, well, it's I just have a, to keep watching this. Such a really interesting twist on the whole, you know, dynamic, right? Yes. Like, it's, yeah, they're, they're, it's, yeah. They do a really interesting character development. And yeah. And I, I feel like, and I don't know, maybe I'm imagining or I'm just hopeful, but I feel like at some point they're going to come together. Which they never, because they never did before, yeah, right? I know. <laughs> but yeah. that's how I feel it should go. I think that would be a nice switch. Yeah. But because you can see, you can sort of see it. But it's possible. We it's don't fun. know. I've watched the end of season two, and I will give no spoilers. Good. Uh, Good. I just hope that there's that they are able to film a season three because it's 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 worth watching. It really yeah. is. It's yeah, it's good. Um, uh, one of the, my favorite parts of the show is. I love to ask my guests what advice they would give to these people that I call rebels in waiting. These are the people who are just about to do something. They're just about to take that leap, to step off the edge, to, you know, but they're just looking for that last push, that last bit of knowledge that plunks into place and makes it all possible. What advice would you give to these rebels in waiting to take their next step, whether it's to write a book, whether it's to, uh, you know, try to get into sea space or whether, do you know what I mean? Like what's your advice? Just do it. Just, <laughs> I think that slogan's taken, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> Damn you, Nike. 
Um, no, seriously. I mean, if you want to write a book, you can think about it forever. Sure. But the book is never going to happen until you actually sit down and start doing it. Yeah. Um, and that's the only way to to write anything <laughs> like is to actually get words down on a piece of paper and you'll never, never get published if you don't have a book or a short story or yeah. whatever, you know, you have to have something completed. So you just have to do it. Nice. I love that. And you have to do seven at a time, seven at a time. You do. Oh yeah. Cause you have seven stories in you. Oh, at least like a minimum, <laughs> like, <laughs> And I recommend actually only do one at a time. It gets really complicated when you're trying to juggle multiple projects. Right. Because nothing will get done. Just do do one thing. One step, one step in front of the other. Yep. Right. Just start. Sit down and start. What uh, this is, this is just for the writers in the room. Um, What do you do to push past the blank page? Watch Netflix. (laughs) (laughs) Anything else but right. (laughs) Um, You know what helps me the most Mm -hmm. is talking to other writers. Um, I run a, every Sunday I do the short story salon, which is not really geared specifically to short stories. It's really to whatever people want to, um, whatever people are writing. Yeah. Um, but it is really more of like a, it's a Sunday. It's like, if you don't go to church, you might as well come to short stories. <laughs> like, <laughs> and is like, it in person or is it, it, it is online right now. Yeah. Um, it was in person, but, um, I mean, it is just, it is so valuable to talk to other people who are, um, going through the same thing. And if you find that you're stuck, um, sharing ideas with other people yeah. is just a great way to kind of unblock that whatever is preventing you oh, from writing. Good. So, um, that's been super fun. And and I have a regular group of people who keep coming and, um, you know, they're becoming their own little family oh, kind of so thing. Nice. So, and they really love it online. I don't think they want it to go back to in person. Actually, Interesting. <laughs> And it is kind of nice on a Sunday, not having to like get up. Yeah. And like you can pants off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, last question. I saved the hardest questions for the end. Where does one learn how to use apostrophes properly? What's an apostrophe? <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Do you have any, I guess what I'm saying is that, are there any resources that you could point us at? I was going to say, didn't you learn that in school? <laughs> oh yeah. So long gone. Um, I just, my, my, I use apostrophes whimsically. Okay. Yeah. Just throw them in wherever. Yeah. In the middle of a word. <laughs> it's got to be right. Like Somewhere. sometimes. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. Um, when do you use an apostrophe? It, or um, how, where do you, where do you learn that? Like, do you, do you have some writer's tools? Books. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. All right. I, oh, I'm just, <clears throat> we do sometimes do, um, grammar and punctuation classes yeah (laughs) but what's actually really funny is even when we recognize that like you don't have to be a great grammar whiz to write right you know and Uh, you don't need to know how to use your apostrophes properly (laughs) somebody will edit it for you at you know once it's published judge you (laughs) (laughs) maybe a little bit (laughs) um but Ah, uh, there's a lot of resources online, really. I, I would recommend you Google how do you use an apostrophe. Yeah, yeah fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, there's a lot of great writing books out there, though, too. Um, Strunk and White, I think, has a really great um, grammar book. Yeah, it's great. So Robin Van Eck, you've got your book coming out in November. There's going to be show notes in the podcast so people can click on links and go see your book launch. They can check out the Alexandra Writers Center. Um, Thank you so much for being a guest on the show. Well, thank you. This has been fun. You can find out more about every one of our guests in the show notes at the rebel rebel podcast.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the rebel rebel, wherever you get your favorite podcasts. I'm your host, Michael Dargie. Thank you so much for listening.